Obviously, there has been a ton of talk about Tesla's Cybertruck recently, but I am starting to think that the Cybertruck really isn't about the Cybertruck. It's about the next gen vehicle. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm going to start off this video with a short one minute clip from Sandy Monroe's interview with Elon Musk on Monroe Live. I'll put a link to that in the description. The entire conversation obviously is well worth the listen, but I just wanna pull out one little part because it actually relates to Walter Isaacson's biography where Isaacson talks about how Elon is not very excited about the Model 2 or next gen vehicle because it's not one of those exciting vehicles that Tesla is making, right? You know, they got to make the S, they got to make the X, they got to make the Cybertruck. These are all very exciting, pushing the envelope vehicles. But in the clip from the Sandy Monroe interview I'm about to play, you'll hear how Elon is not so excited about the vehicle itself, but the production process. That's what matters to him. And I think that that relates to the Cybertruck. And I'm going to talk about that afterwards. But first, the clip. So we obviously are, we are working on a low cost electric vehicle that will be made in very high volume. Um, we're like, quite far advanced in that work. The you know, I review the, the, the production line plans for that every week. Um, and I think the, the, the revolution in manufacturing that will be represented by that car uh, will blow people's minds. It is not like any car production line that anyone's ever seen. Is this going to have the um, basically um, unboxed system or would this be too much of a question asked? The, the thing the thing that's most interesting about this is is it's a production system it's it's a level of production technology that is uh far in advance of any automotive plant on earth i can hardly wait now yeah, yeah. it's gonna be cool it's gonna be very um, cool sure yeah i think we're you know um and, and i should point out the uh, that that we will be making the the the, the first production line will be here in the Gigafactory in Texas. All right, so you just heard Elon say that it was going to blow people's minds, but not the vehicle itself, but the production line. So that is an interesting twist on everything. The vehicle itself, obviously, if you're making a $25,000, you know, reduced cost vehicle, is going to be relatively basic simply because it has to be. But what's interesting to Elon is the production process. That's what's getting him out of bed in the morning and making him interested. If you go back to Isaacson biography, you can hear Elon talking. He pushed really, really hard to get them to do a robo taxi and just skip the next gen vehicle altogether to make it a car without a steering wheel, without an accelerator, without a brake pedal, all of that stuff. And Franz and the team pushed back and said, no, 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 we can't do that. We're not ready yet. That's you know, betting the farm on full self-driving, which has not gotten, you know, regulatory approval yet to drive around. So even in limited areas. So, you know, you're looking at a situation where there's a, there's a disconnect between what Elon wanted to do, which was to really push the envelope, create a car, you know, very, very forward thinking car like the Cybertruck. But in this case, the forward looking part of it would be the fact that it was just driverless. It's built to be a robo taxi from the ground up. And the team pushed back and they got him to rescind that opinion and to decide to go with it. Although it sounds like the vehicle is going to be produced without the necessity for it. So you can take out the accelerator brake and steering wheel and just move to having the car be a robo taxi overall very, very easily. The holiday season is well and truly upon us, and short winter days too. While it's great to see family and to travel, holiday stress, lots of, let's face it, not healthy food, and those short days can all take a toll. I know because they used to for me. That is until I started taking AG1. AG1 is foundational nutrition that provides your body with what might be missing during the holidays and all year long. With 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens, AG1 gives you the foundational nutrition your body craves, especially during the disruptive holiday season. And as a bonus, it tastes great with a hint of pineapple. Mmm. Delicious. Lately, I've been substituting AG1 for coffee in the mornings when I go to meetings or teach my classes. I can sip on it for hours and it gives me tons of energy without that caffeine crash that happens with coffee. Plus, it reduces my appetite, which keeps me from eating all those snacks that people leave out this time of year. And as an added bonus, AG1 doesn't get cold like coffee, so you really can sip on it for hours and it tastes great the whole time. Compared to a year ago before I started taking AG1, I feel worlds better. 
I weigh less, I have more energy, and I have a better, more positive attitude. And if you click on my link in the description, you'll get five free travel packs, which are perfect for those holiday trips, and a year's supply of vitamins D3 and K2. A big thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to click my link in the description to get your first month's supply of AG1, the five travel packs, and your year's supply of vitamins D3 and K2. And now let's get back to it. And if you've been paying attention to all of the Cybertruck videos, including many of mine up here, this will make you pay a little bit of attention right now because you'll be like, wait a second, what is new in the Cybertruck? One of the major new things is steer by wire. What is steer by wire? That is when you're dissociating the steering wheel from the steering actuation. So there's a disconnect between them. There's no longer a giant shaft that goes between the two, between the steering wheel and the wheels of the vehicle. And while there have been other vehicles to be pedantic, that have done this kind of before they've always had a steering column in there with a clutch system that you could then apply that to the steering column to make it actually work in a manual manner if the steer by wire failed to work what tesla has done here is completely gotten rid of that there is no longer this mechanical clutch system the failover system is a multiply redundant system inside the vehicle and that is something that a robo taxi will have to have it's going to have to have a multiply redundant steering system in order to get rid of the steering wheel inside the car. Same thing, of course, with throttle by wire and brake by wire. All of that stuff means that you don't have a physical connection between the accelerator, the brake, and the steering wheel and the things that are actually happening in the vehicle anymore. And that is a necessary step to get to a robo taxi future. And the second major advancement in the Cybertruck is the 48 volt underlying architecture. In other words, going from 12 volt to 48 volt throughout the vehicle. And by the way, when Tesla produced that 48 volt, how to transition to 48 volt PDF that they send out to all the other auto industry CEOs. Everybody's like, oh, haha, ha, that's really funny. And that's cute that Tesla did that. And a little bit of a, you know, slap move or whatever you want to call it. But I think it was actually a very, very important move that Tesla did. And one that was very selfish on their part, not being generous with everyone else. It was actually a necessity to get everybody else married to the 48 volt architecture. They're like, here, make it happen as fast as you can, because we want our suppliers and everyone else in the industry to be on this standard so that we can get the parts we need more easily in order to build out at 48 volt at a very, very large scale. Remember the Cybertruck we're looking at somewhere around 200 to 250,000 vehicles per year. That's their goal, their stated goal. It might be 500,000 a year, whatever. But still, Elon specifically said that in 2024, the Cybertruck will not have a material impact on Tesla's financials because of course it's still ramping and everything in 2025 it will but it's going to be a you know relatively small vehicle in terms of production numbers now 500,000 a year would not be that small but it is going to be very very small compared to the next gen vehicle the model 2 which will probably be on the order of 5 to 10 million vehicles per year so an order of magnitude less so in my mind moving to the 48 volt architecture with the Cybertruck was less about the Cybertruck than it was to take a smaller production ramp vehicle, something that had fewer vehicles that were being produced, and prove the technology out that they need for a vehicle that's going to be produced at an order of magnitude more than the current vehicle. And if that reminds you of the Model S compared to the Model 3, yeah, you're on the right track. I think this is Tesla's secret master plan from 2006 or whenever that was. This is it being carried out over again in the next iteration. So the Cybertruck, even though you could be looking at a half million vehicles per year, is the small version of things. It's where they're proving out the technology to figure out how to build this next gen vehicle as efficiently as possible. Part of that, of course, is the steer by wire, brake by wire, accelerate by wire. Also part of that is the 48 volt architecture. A third part of this and something you saw as a little background element in Sandy's interview with Elon is the giga castings, the very, very large scale castings. So the Cybertruck was a big step up from the Model 3 and the Model Y just because the castings are larger. And it's really amazing Tesla was able to manufacture these gigantic castings as they are. But in my mind, again, this is proving out the technology for the next level, which is to produce a 
an entire vehicle in one casting. So currently with the Cybertruck, Model 3, Model Y, all of those, there, there are two castings. There's one in the front, one in the back, and then there's a structural battery pack in between. I believe what they're looking for right now, and we've seen patent applications for this, is one giant giga casting, which would have you know a front and a back just like that, and probably just two rails on the side that you would then drop the structural battery pack into. Why does it matter about having those rails on the side? They don't provide a ton of stuff, but what they do is they provide a rigid structure to drop everything into. And you know, it, it's there's always when you're marrying up parts that haven't been put together from the get-go, there's these tolerances, right? This thing doesn't fit quite right as it fits here. So a little bit of mushing around, you have to push things, they can be, you know, misaligned, all of that stuff, which can lead to ultimately panel gaps and all sorts of other stuff and just slow the production line down. So the fastest way that Tesla could produce a vehicle would be to produce one giant casting, a front and a back that are fairly structural. The side ones would again just be rails, so they're relatively straightforward, but it would keep the entire thing rigid. You then put the battery pack right on there, you're ready to go. And then finally, and I think most controversially to most people, I still am very much of the opinion that they are looking hard at using stainless steel for the next gen vehicle. And everyone's like, no, 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 it's too heavy, it's too hard to work with, all of that, yada, yada, yada. But again, the Cybertruck, if you consider it a technology proving ground, if you think of it like the Model S compared to the Model 3, they're working out the steps of how can you do this at mass scale. Now, would the stainless steel be as thick as it is in the Cybertruck? No, they could probably do it at half that thickness. But because it's a much smaller car and it doesn't need quite the tolerances that the Cybertruck does. But if they can do stainless steel as opposed to paint, they get rid of the whole paint shop. And that is something that's super important to manufacturing a vehicle on the order of five to 10 million of them per year. So I know people don't agree with me about this, but I am sticking to my guns here that at least if Tesla doesn't go with stainless steel, they will have considered it very, very hard because the big advantage of stainless is you do not need to have paint. And paint is a massive slowdown when it comes to building a vehicle. Again, it doesn't matter so much if you're building a couple hundred thousand a year at a couple of factories, really starts to matter at 2 million, 4 million, 6 million, and that kind of numbers, everything you can save in terms of cost and in terms of time and complexity, all of that goes right back to being able to build a vehicle more quickly. So in my mind, when we got to see the factory, when we got to walk through it and do the tour on that, and if you haven't seen the video where Hans and Scott and Brian and I talk about Joe Tegmeyer's video, definitely check that out up here. But anyway, I believe that walking through that factory tour was a preview of what the next gen vehicle is. So when Elon talks about the production line blowing people's mind, I think that we actually saw some of that with the Cybertruck factory production line. I think we were given an Easter egg. And this would, again, be very par for the course with Tesla. They love to hide things in plain sight. They love to be like, look, there's nothing here to see, whatever, right? And then you look again, when you go back and look at it through the lens of the future, you're like, whoa, there was a lot of stuff that they were showing off to us that we just weren't picking up on at the time. So in my mind, the steer and throttle and brake by wire, the 48 volt architecture, the massive castings and the stainless steel are all clues about what the next gen vehicle is going to look like and be produced like. More important than look like, it's how it's going to be produced. And I'm very convinced what we're seeing here is Tesla's master plan, the next generation. I know Elon's a big Star Trek fan, so I had to throw that one in there. But anyway, I really do think that we are seeing the next iteration of this. So instead of going from a few thousand cars to a few hundred thousand cars, like they did with the Model S to the Model 3, we're going to be going from a few hundred thousand vehicles in the Cybertruck to a few million vehicles in the next gen vehicle. And just like with the Model S, the Cybertruck is the proving ground. They're figuring out how to do it right now. We didn't get to see how the batteries were being made and all of that kind of stuff, but I think behind the scenes, there's also a lot of stuff going on with that as well. So you could add that as sort of a fifth element, but I wasn't able to see that, so it's very difficult to get insight into that. But from listening to Elon and going through the factory tour, I'm very convinced that we got quite the insight into how the next-gen vehicle is being built, hiding in plain sight. And if you listen to the end of that clip that I played about Elon's saying they're building it first in Texas. Why would they be building it first in Texas? Well, obviously the engineers and everybody are there. But the other piece of the puzzle is if they're actually proving it all out with the Cybertruck production line and building this next gen vehicle production line sort of in parallel back in the dark where we couldn't see, then that would be the perfect opportunity to transfer the technology from one to the other simply by walking 50 meters or so from one section of the factory to the next rather than having to go all the way down to Mexico. So this is all brilliant stuff on Tesla's part. 
and I really think it points to how the future is going to develop and what this next gen vehicle is going to look like, but much more importantly, how it's going to be built. And that not only gets Elon up out of bed in the morning, but also gets me out of bed as well, because I think it's super exciting to watch what happens. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And of course, if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t shirts, the Tesla meme t t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, a big thanks once again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description to get started today. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.